and Bitter Cold and Chris Graft ran an ad in the Detroit paper. They wanted an automotive stylist to move to Pompano Beach, Florida and design boats. I got on the next plane and got the job. And Harry Call. Uh, Harry Call was president and Chuck Burgess was sales and marketing. And these were all wonderful people and I worked well with them and they accepted what I did. And we were able to produce a lot of designs and ideas and fantastic engineers. Fred Hudson was uh, the director of styling and Bill McCarr was the chief engineer and they had finished the design of the first 38 Commander Express. It was really in, in the box. Uh, the design was uh, firmed up. Dealers didn't know it was coming and uh, they planned to introduce it in 64. The first boat would be finished. A month or so before the New York show where we were going to introduce it, uh, Fred Hudson, my boss, got a call from Dick Teague. And he wanted Fred to come back to Detroit and head up a studio at American Motors. And I guess the money was so good, Fred said, well, I'm going to leave and so it's, it's all yours. <laughs> so I went down to uh, Chuck Burgess that I'd like to be director of styling because I was afraid they'd bring in Raymond Lowy or somebody to, from the outside to uh, do the design and I, I was really getting into the boat thing. The model was there. The first 38 Commander looked great. We introduced it at the uh, New York Boat Show. And it was the middle of winter in New York at the Coliseum. And uh, we were right at the top of the escalator and he had a big tarp over the 38 Commander, cardboard seagulls hanging from the rafters, a big press conference uh, in the morning of the show open, and they pulled the wraps off the boat and all the dealers, <laughs> you know, that's beautiful. They had it jacked up so it looked like it was going on plane. They had the, and I noticed this guy coming up the carpet. He had a fedora and a cape thrown over his shoulder and he came up the back end of the boat and came on he said, now this is a boat. <laughs> and I went over and introduced myself and it was Raymond Lowy, the <laughs> famous designer. <laughs> the price was great too. I, they were probably underpriced in those days and overbuilt because they really didn't know how thick to make the fiberglass on the first few boats so nice. they overdid the bottom. I think Bill McCarrer said, uh, well mahogany planks are three quarters of an inch thick so let's make the bottom three quarter inch fiberglass. So that was way overbuilt with the structure that was in there. That's why these boats are still around today. There. After the show they had a lot of orders and we went back and they got into production and I started working on the 38 sedan and the Sport Fish on the same hull. They wanted a lower priced commander, an entry level, so I did a 27 proposal and a 31 proposal. Still kind of the straight line design of the 38. I started getting requests from dealers, you know, the fiberglass was really going over and people were buying the boats so they said, uh, let's expand and they would send ideas in what size would be good and what models would sell in their area. And the 35 uh, came up and they said, uh, we need a sport fisherman and an express cruiser. So I did the broken shear hull, which had a, a long sweep to it. And uh, then I started playing with the cabin design and the straight line design didn't go with the broken shear. So I did more of a free form on the express cruiser. And then people said, well, we need a bridge for the 35, the, uh, the express. And this is a small, top compared to that so that bridge didn't work <clears throat> so I thought well we'll make a universal command bridge that'll fit on small tops it'll fit on a 31 35 so I designed a, an undercut bridge it was two-piece mold so it would stand on its own on a small hard top and then I started looking at uh, the old mahogany 
sport boats that we were phasing out and uh, let's make a fiberglass sexy boat. So I came up with a 19 Lancer hull and put a center cockpit deck on it. And the first boat was a 19 Commander inboard with a V-drive engine in it. And then I took the 23 Lancer and did a sexy interior for it with a uh, uh, helm and companion seat with headrests and a stern seat and a sun pad on the back end and over the engine and that was the uh, 23 Commander. I had been working then on the uh, 27 Commander which was a four sleeper entry level uh, fiberglass cruiser and the 31 was a six sleeper on both the 27 and the 31 we did a sport fishing model too. And the 31 had three models with a sedan. And also an open boat with no top on it. And then we went to the 35 with the express cruiser and the sport fisherman. And uh, then we had the three 38s, the express, the sedan, and the sport fisherman. Just stretched out the express to make the sedan and the sport fish dropped the cockpit <coughs> so there was a step down from the sedan. I think the 47 proposal was the next rendering I did. I was trying to look, make it look long and racy but there were a lot of accommodations in it and um, it, uh, the proportions worked out well but uh, then I did a 55 commander which really stretched it out looked low and sleek. And then the 60 was the top of the line. At the meet in Bradenton we went aboard one. The owner of the boat said, would you sign this instrument panel? And I said, no, no, you don't want me. <laughs> oh yeah, it'll make the boat worth more. <laughs> 42 aft cabin and I cut the shear down, notched it for a low cockpit sport fisherman. 47, we then cut a notch in the back end so you get a sport fish, a 47 with a fishing cockpit. The command was, were expensive construction. We had three piece hulls in many cases and uh, three or four piece cabin tops. And so they said, uh, let's come up with a 41 with a single piece hull mold and a single cabin top and uh, it would be like a flush deck motor yacht and a 45, a larger version of that, and it was offered with uh, Command Bridge. They sold because the price was right. It was a center cockpit on the 35 hull. It had the forward end of the 35 Express, and then a center cockpit and an aft stateroom with a separate entry. You walk through the cockpit to get to the aft stateroom. To see your work 40 years later with all this attention and people are buying them and redoing them, spending more than they were new. But the happiest part of it is he really had the time of his life designing boats. I had no idea these boats would last that long. Nobody really knew how long fiberglass would last. And uh, these things look as good as new. Your 35 is falling apart down there. Uh -oh. Deck. oh yeah. That's not really your responsibility, is it? Uh -oh. No, that's a that's a cabinet maker's responsibility. There. You just enjoy talking to the owners. They may be second or third generation owners that have these boats, and they're so proud of what they're doing to make, personalize them and make them livable for their family. This is, for me, better than money. You know, I, I had more fun in this job, and 40 years later, here we are, having a meet every year, and get to see these old boats looking as good as they were new or better, and people enjoying them. That's uh, fantastic for me. Floating portfolio. Yeah. 
and I enjoyed taking pictures of the boats and their owners and some of them he even had me sign their boats so <laughs> <laughs> can't be all bad. <laughs> Well, they sure have uh, made me very happy. In old age and retirement, to be able to do this once a year and meet these people year after year. I think we've been to almost every meet in different parts of the country. And uh, <clears throat> love to look at the boats and see what people have done with them. And, uh, and I'm very proud. <laughs> <laughs> Remember I told you when you get discouraged along the way in your designing and I said don't worry about it honey, all true artists aren't appreciated until long after they're dead. <laughs> well this proves us wrong. Yeah. Proves me wrong. <laughs> To my love, took it down. I climbed a mountain and I turned around. And I saw my reflection in snow covered hills till the landslide brought me down. Oh, mirror in the sky, what is love? Can the child? In my heart rise above Can I sail through the changing ocean tides Can I handle the seasons of my life Yeah.